In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of really important basic chemistry concepts. We're going to talk about how we classify mixtures and why those are different than pure substances. I actually started making this video in an effort to answer a student's question, so we should start there. The question reads, which of the following techniques can be used to separate a heterogeneous mixture into its component parts? The student who was asking me the question, or asking for an explanation, was really frustrated by this idea that a heterogeneous mixture could be sorted into colors, right? You think about mixing a whole bunch of paint together, you can't unmix paint, right? You can't unscramble the egg. We've been talking about concepts like this for a couple of weeks now. So what's up with this color thing? Well, we better get into the answer, and to do that, we're going to have to understand what makes a heterogeneous mixture heterogeneous. First, it's almost lunchtime, so I want to make sure I get my salad dressing ready. Let's give it a good shake here, because I don't want just the oily part off the top. A heterogeneous mixture has a bunch of things put together in a container that are different, right? Hetero in Latin means different. So in the picture, we see a bunch of M&Ms. They're all M&Ms, but they're different colors. So we're going to call it a mixture of different colored M&Ms or a heterogeneous mixture. And this is an example of a mixture that you could sort by color. If we sort the M&Ms by color, then they end up being homogeneous mixtures, each in their own bowl. So the bowl of blue M&Ms is an example of a homogeneous mixture. You still have distinct items all put together, mixed together inside of a container. So we have to call it a mixture, but all of those items have been sorted by sameness, right? Homo in Latin means same. So the blue M&Ms in the bowl are a homogeneous mixture. This is also one of those spots where the answer to some other question is actually written right into the definition. Let's read and see if we can find the key point. Homogeneous mixtures require a little more work to separate their components. Heat, pressure, or differences in density are some of the methods used to separate homogeneous mixtures. That's going to be really important in our next slide. So back to the question, which of the following techniques can be used to separate heterogeneous mixtures, right? Mixtures of a variety of different things. Those last two options, apply heat and apply pressure, we know from the definition those are for homogeneous mixtures. So we're going to cross them out. It's been a minute, so I want to check on my salad dressing. And it turns out that I left it for too long. The oil has separated out from the other ingredients in the mixture. And even though I shook it vigorously, the oil is less dense, and so it floats to the top. Now, you all know that most of the time I agree with what's written in our science curriculum. I think it's very smart and accessible. But every once in a while I come across a question where I personally, as a science teacher, have a disagreement with the way in which the curriculum writers created a question or explained a concept. And this is one of those places. Very specifically, in our curriculum, very specific examples of heterogeneous mixtures are given, right? They talk about rocks, cereal, sand, and salad dressing. So I figured I'd try the salad dressing thing myself. And sure enough, as you've seen, salad dressing will often separate itself out into component parts by density. The oil is less dense, so it floats to the top. 
So in this case, if you get to question number four about heterogeneous mixtures in module 3.06, sorting things by color is a good answer. You can take those multicolored M&Ms and sort them into different bowls, moving from a heterogeneous mixture to a homogeneous mixture. But because they're listing salad dressing as an example of a heterogeneous mixture, I will also accept separation by density. Now really, all sorts of different separation methodologies can be used for different substances and different mixtures. You as a scientist want to apply the solution that fits your tools and your experiments. So know that you have lots of options. I think mainly the problem here is that it's a multiple choice question and they're only allowing one right answer. I'm going to suggest to you that there are at least two right answers in this question. Well, now that we've answered the first question, it turns out we have another problem. We'll keep going and make sure that we understand the difference between a homogeneous mixture, a mixture of a bunch of distinct things that are all the same, and a pure substance, because a pure substance is a whole different deal. In this question, they're asking us to identify a homogeneous mixture. Now, when we look at the first option, cereal, heterogeneous should probably jump right out at us. There are a bunch of distinct things in a container, all mixed together in a random order, but some of them are blueberries and some of them are, I don't know, crunchy clusters of honey oats or whatever happens to be in that bowl. Okay, cereal is a good example of a, hum excuse me, a heterogeneous mixture. You could sort that bowl of cereal into a bowl of blueberries, a bowl of oats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're going to cross that one out. Before we look at the other possible answers for this question, let's check in and make sure we understand what a pure substance is. So a pure substance is an element. For example, gold, or in the question we're going to talk about nickel or silver, right? If you take some gold and you cut it up into smaller pieces, you still have gold. If you cut those smaller pieces into even smaller pieces, you still have gold. If you break off just one single atom, you still have gold. A pure substance is an element. It cannot be broken into parts and pieces unless you go to the subatomic level then you have protons, neutrons, and electrons. You don't have stuff anymore. You have subatomic particles. Okay? So a homogeneous mixture can still be separated out into parts and pieces. A pure substance cannot be separated. In this definition, our curriculum mentions glue as an example of a pure substance. And the reason that they're doing that is that when you look at the molecules in glue, every single molecule is the same. You can separate out the different molecules, but every molecule is the same. Now, if you do the same thing to a bottle of shampoo, which is a homogeneous mixture, you'll find out there are a bunch of different molecules in your shampoo. Some of them give it smell. Some of, it make it, some of them make it slippery. Some of them maybe give it color. Some of them might do multiple things. Shampoo looks like it's all the same stuff when you use it, but if you look at it at a microscopic level or use chemistry to separate out the parts and pieces, you'll get a variety of different molecules that are mixed together very evenly to make a homogeneous mixture. Again, Gold cannot be separated out into a bunch of different molecules, but shampoo can. Well, after all that, I think we're finally ready to answer our question. Silver and nickel are both metals. They appear in the middle section of the periodic table. NI, number 28, is nickel, and AG, a Latin abbreviation for silver, is number 47. They're both 
elements, which makes them pure substances, not mixtures. And so we have to cross them out because remember, we're still looking for a homogeneous mixture. If it's not cereal and it's not the elements, the answer has to be the shampoo. Let's finish up with a quick review of our key chemistry concepts. A homogeneous mixture is a mixture that looks the same throughout. So if you pour out the contents of your shampoo or squeeze out the contents of your toothpaste tube, it's all gonna be the same color, the same texture. It's all very thoroughly mixed. But using chemistry, we could separate out a variety of different molecules. That makes it a homogeneous mixture. It looks the same, but it could be separated. A heterogeneous mixture doesn't look the same. You can see very clearly by observing the bowl of M&Ms that some of them are different colors and they could be separated out pretty easily into their distinct parts. In the same way that we were able to shake the salad dressing up and for just a minute, it looked like it was all the same, but it very quickly separated itself out by density. So a mixture that has different things in it, which are pretty distinct and easily separated. In the end, this is really about elements and how you get an element by itself. Metals never show up in nature as pure substances, usually because oxygen is so corrosive. So iron never shows up by itself. It comes as ferric oxide. Copper never shows up as its own pure substance. It shows up as cupric oxide. It's mixed together with other rocks, other elements, other metals, other things from the atmosphere. Okay, so the homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures that we looked at and talked about can usually be separated through physical means, a change in physical state, right? Gas, liquid, solid, plasma usually annihilates things, so let's not separate that way. Um, when we're dealing with separating out elements, getting down to pure substances and the elements on the periodic table, we're going to have to use chemical reactions to affect a separation and collect samples of those pure elements. If you're interested in knowing more about this, I would highly recommend the book, The Disappearing Spoon by Sam Keen. He's a great historian of science and tells a wonderful set of stories about the history of the periodic table and all of the crazy things that were done to discover and separate out all of those individual elements. Thanks for watching today. Please let me know if you have other questions as you work on 3.06.